previously on Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. Oh shit, there's a fly in the room. Oh shit, fly, fly, oh. Oh god, oh god, he's on my eye. Somebody, get, I, I can't blink, I can't get him off. Oh. <laughs> oh, never mind, I got him. Now back to screeching at people. Hello, Sniggle B. Back with some more Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. We last left off, we started the first part of the trial and we discovered that it it's actually possible for Darion to have killed uh, the bearded dude because uh, the crime took place earlier, which is what I was what I was thinking. I felt like that was the only way that would have made any sense at all. So uh, now we're gonna have Darion come to the stand and we're gonna fucking grill him like a Cuban panini. Mm. Anyway, you guys explained to me some about what uh, what I was confused about last episode. Uh, regarding how Apollo was able to to come to that conclusion from just from looking at the brooch, like what what do the brooch contribute to? Well, basically, from what you love you guys said, it it just proved that she had to have gone through the ventilation, and as she went through the ventilation, she dropped the the brooch. But that combined with the fact that you know, it, as she said, it took two minutes, and but it really only. You saw it only take 20 seconds or something. That's how I figured out it was two people. I still think that it was, wasn't was explained very well. It wasn't... I feel like they didn't come to that conclusion at very smoothly. It it, it, it was sort of like... Because what, what bothered me is that I had to present the brooch to continue. But I felt like the brooch by itself doesn't prove anything. The fact that I, it was... The, the brooch was the thing that just like suddenly proved that there had to be two people... That's what really made it confusing for me. It's really more it, that combined with the other information. So I think it could have been handled a little better, but overall, whatever, whatever. Anyway, let's let's just get on with this shit. I'm ready to grill me some Aussie, Aussie Osborne blooming onions. Wait, what? July 10th, 140 p.m. Just quarter and alignment number two. Hey, I'm reading the thing now. Paulo, I can't believe it. What? What happened? Uh, it really happened during the second act. Right in the middle of Lemoire's performance? Why she was in that the air vent. And this, that switch in the filming guitar. Oh, that was the other thing that... That was the thing that also... I feel like they should have used a different word for... I don't know. Either uh, for switch. For either this or the switching of the two people. Because that, that that was part of the thing. I didn't re initially realize until I went back to edit. Uh, when, when Graham Ree actually came in and replaced... Lamoir. I, I initially thought it meant the very end of it, so then it was really confusing for me. Um, but I realized, okay, it meant he had replaced her at the very beginning. Although, when you really think about it, if he was able to pull off being able to look just like her, why did she even need to be on the stage at the beginning at all, you know? She could have started at the other end, at the other end of the ventilation, just ready to show up on top when uh, uh, she disappeared uh, at the beginning, right? I mean, just think about that. Like, was there any reason for her to be on the stage for, like, what, like, 10 seconds before getting switched out with Grammary and going through the ventilation? I mean, could she just start on the other end? What was the point of her being on stage uh, at the beginning at all? And that switch and the flame guitar, that fucking switch. Anyway, they, I wish they called it, I wish they had said sw the switch to the two people, I don't know, just something different, because when they said the switch, I kept thinking they meant to refer to this switch. When you link it all together, that's what you end up with. Uh, uh, I knew you had what it took. Oh, hey, it's me, Hobo, Hobo Wright. Oh, Daddy! Hi, honey. Oh, uh, Mr. Wright, you believed in me? <laughs> Fuck you! Uh, back to being a great A asshole. Not really. Huh? I just thought that'd make a cooler entrance than saying hi. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. What did his shit all over Apollo? I'm sorry, I know Phineas kind of got shit on, but mostly he was shit on, I feel like, by Maya, I, more than anyone. But I, I don't know, I feel like in just this one game, Apollo has endured more shit from Wright, from Trucy, from Clavier, from fucking everybody, than Phoenix did it all across his past three games, you know? Just like, why? Good God, man! Way to instill some hope in your fucking protege. Why do I even bother hoping? <laughs> Where have you been lately, Daddy? And thanks for defending me, Trucy. Just like you always do. <laughs> You've been coming to the office at all. Ah, uh, sorry about that, Trucy. I'm on a secret mission. I'm out getting loose change to buy me some Mickey D's. Secret, you mean like you're undercover? Like Mr. Two's only shorter and not as well dressed. Ha, huh, yeah! I could say some wicked burns too! Yeah! Yeah, 
not give me a high five, Jersey. Hey, that was my daddy you're talking about. I, just, I, I fucking hate all of you. <laughs> oh, oh, I hate this place. <laughs> oh no, what if you're shot too, daddy? Ah, ah, I'll just flex the bullet out of me. Hey, I got hit by a fucking car and I didn't die. I took that shit head on. When I do a thing like that to you. Anyway, I'm off for a while again. Huh, you're leaving? Yep, just came in to insult you once and now I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, am, I am truly fucking useless in this game. Oh, one more, one, one thing before I go. What? Suck a dick. Thanks. Bye. Good luck. <laughs> Apollo doesn't even take a shit. That wasn't sarcastic and sounding at all. Ah, uh, I am so stoned right now. Um, is that all you came to say? I think you have things pretty much under control. You'll get my get off the no doubt. Yeah, but. You're after that detective, aren't you? Doryan Krishan. Won't be easy proving he did it. Especially not under the current court system. The current court system? What did Prosecutor Gavin say during the trial? Your, ca your case is based on one fragile assumption. Namely that our diva divine is telling the truth. But what about all the proof? The brooch? The switch? Yeah, and what about the lack of proof that Maki could have possibly done any of this shit? A flute piece of jewelry and a lyrical blunder. There are plenty of other ways to explain these things. A flaming guitar, too. I, I gotta say, th this expression right here, this is like, I feel like this epitomizes Hobo Right right here. Like, I do LSD in the back of my pickup truck, and I don't fucking give shits. All because you lack definitive proof of their connection to the case. But... In the sultry songs versus lying, your case melts like butter in a frying pan. Leave mine the faintly sit, singed scent of failure. <laughs> wow, that was a beautiful way to just to tell me what a hopeless lawyer I am. So what do I do? Like I said, good luck. <laughs> That's my advice for you. And be aware that it will be impossible to prove his guilt by conventional methods. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying I have to cheat, essentially. Oh, that reminds me. I have something to give you from our detective friend. Take this guy, Emma. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a thing that used to win. Oh wait, no, never mind. It's just a—it's a piece of food in the shape of poo. Wait, no, it's just poo. Let's see. His bag of snacks here was meant for me. Oh, ah, here it is. Oh. What are those, Daddy? They don't look like very good snacking material. They were found at the scene. Now, since the fragments were revealed, the traces of gunpowder. Oh, all right. This probably is. This probably is the definitive evidence I need at the very end. Gunpowder. Probably a firecracker or something similar, like the ones kids are into these days. These fragments were found under the sofa at the scene of the crime, actually. Uh, oh, fucking, there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, but how did she not see that before when she found the incinerator, which was probably right next to it, right? How did she see, like, hmm, there's this cool, this incinerator thing and a bunch of other useless crap under here. I'm going to wait till halfway through the trial before I fucking give that shit to him. Seriously, how could she have not possibly not notice that? That's a bad idea. But anyway, yeah, that's the, that's where my gunshots came from, right? And that was what the point of the other lighter was. Under the sofa? Hey, Apollo, that's where we found that little device thingy. Right, this. Again, don't know how she didn't see us before. Finally, some evidence that makes sense. In my pocket you go. That's all for me, I suppose. See you after the verdict. Maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> Every man has an igniter inside him. <laughs> Excuse me? Would you stop being, try to be poetic? Find our young Christian's igniter and set it off. By which I mean stick a, stick a dynamite in his pocket and blow him the fuck up. And he just walked out the door, just like, just like a magician norm <laughs> normally. Uh, what does he want us to do? No conventional methods, what does that mean? Uh, better find some sticks of dynamite. Guess we did, we just have to take his advice and hope it makes sense when time comes. I guess. We're almost at the finish line. Hang in there, Trucy. And Apollo, Justice, who was also fine. July, July 10th, I went 5 p.m. Discord quarter number three. Oh, oh, now we're gonna start fucking talking. I fucking hate all of you. I, I just wanna point that out, all right? Of course, no back in session. Prosecutor Gavin, where the ball sack is Detective Christian. In the, in the witness lounge, ready to be called in at any time. Very well. Might I add, I don't believe any of this. He, Dion, was, was the first detective I ever worked with. He stopped working together when he moved to Criminal Affairs Division 3. But his guitar playing, it fires my imagination. Yeah, that's nice, but it has nothing to do with the matter at hand. 
so shut the fuck up. Correct? Oh, I know. Air forehead. <laughs> I'm about to prove you the ball's wrong there, Clavier. Well, call the final witness to the stand. Stand up to our younger Chad. I know he's going to be the final witness because you're totally the bad guy. <laughs> Name and occupation, please. Dion Crescent, Detective, Detective Criminal Affairs Division 3. That's the International Affairs Division, for those of you who didn't know. Now I'm a guitarist for the Gavinus. You've heard of us. Do you fully understand the circumstances under which you stand before us today? Yeah, I understand, Yana. What I don't understand is how you let this happen, partner. <laughs> I do not care. You gave me a word I wouldn't be standing there, here. The situation's changed, Ion. And don't call me partner. <laughs> so much for old friends. I see what you're doing, Darion. You're pressing the you're pressing the prosecution. Your Honor, if we could begin the trial. Yes, it's high time we did. Let's hear your fucking bullshit testimony. You may begin with your response to Lamar's testimony. If in fact you have anything to say about it. Oh, I got plenty to say. Lying must be a national pastime in Virginia. And wherever you're from, Mr. Justice, ha! <laughs> Conventional methods are out of the window, huh? Here goes nothing. No, I mean, here comes justice. Darion's Raboodle. Rabute. The diva's lying, plain and simple. She's got nothing to back up a story. In the first place, she never heard my voice. She forgot the words because she heard gunshots as if. Didn't, de didn't Detective Emma Sky hear those gunshots during the third set anyway? The shooting took place when I was on stage, man. Mmm, so you claim Lamar's testimony was a lie? Hey, don't get me wrong, I dig what she's doing, trying to protect that kid. And she's got the court eating vague statements out of her hand just because she's blind. Oh, you go too far, Dion. Look, all I'm saying is you, you got a reliable witness. Why not listen to the detective? Detective Sky? Hmm, I see. Justice, you may even get the cross examination. You didn't waste any time fi finding our weak spot. Can't do this with Lamar's testimony alone. I'll have to find some other way to prove when the shooting took place. All right, bring the balls on. Okay, so I'm guessing, do I just present the firecrackers here? Oh, there we go, okay. Some things were found at the crime scene after yesterday's trial. What things? First thing was this small device. That's the remote, remote triggered igniter. Correct. And one more thing. What are those? Remains of something burnt? Neither guitar help. Traces of gunpowder were, were found on these fragments. We have re report that it was something like a firecracker. Uh, how did Gavin know about this? <laughs> but you think Detective Sky works for you? I received the report this morning before coming here. That's when I made my decision, actually. What decision is this, Prosecutor Gavin? I, I registered Dion as a witness in today's trial, just in case. Oh. Let's raise another possibility. I, I really like Clavier. I don't know. I think he's. I like how he's. I don't know. He's not as petty as some of the like other prosecutor villains. He just kind of. He just wants to find the truth. Those gunshot-like sounds during the third act. Could have been two firecrackers rigged to to go off by remote control. Ha! ha. You got an active imagination, don't you? But you shouldn't say every little thing you think. Your explanation there seems a bit too convenient to me. How so? So you're saying these firecrackers just happened to go off right when two witnesses came walking by? Ha! That's right. Darian was out on stage when it happened, Apollo. How would he know someone was backstage right then? That's... That's true, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Because, yeah, how would... He, he was on stage, how would he even know we would have come in there? The firecracker goes off in, and of the forest and there's no one there to hear. You get my drift. Why go through the trouble, man? <laughs> ah! How do I explain this? He may not look at Badayan as a gifted detective. Show any weakness and he's sure to find it. He may not look at partner. Gee, thanks, man. That reminds me. I happened to pass through that very hallway several times that day myself. And I saw something odd there just before the third seat. Or third set. Something odd? A headset. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. No, literally everybody saw that headset. Why, so why did it take us that as long as it did to fucking get it into evidence? 
It's still there. Some say it still haunts these hallways to this day. A headset. The gondola. All of the band and staff members for Vang. That's right. We picked this up in front of, front of the door to the dressing room. And what if that headset wasn't dropped, but place? And what if it was turned on? You could hear what was going on in the hallway. Even if you were out on stage. Oh, I see. F Whose side are you on, Gavin? Listen to me, Dion. There are no sides in a court of law. Which is why I now turn to you, Air Forehead. I have a question for you. Huh? F for me? The igniter and the burnt fragments were found at the scene of the crime. It's certainly a possibility that they were part of a ruse to fake the sound of sounds of gunshots. Throw the headset from the hallway into the mix and you could fabricate an alibi. But we're still no closer to proving anything. Those gunshots might have been real or fake. We can't say. Uh. You phrased the possibility that the shots heard during the third set were faked. Now you need to prove the other half of the case. The other half? Look, I'll just, I'll just tell him. He wants you to prove the thing went down in the second act while our little piano player was on stage. That right, Gavin? Indeed, if you can't prove that, then to continue this cross-examination would be pointless. Mm. Well, Mr. Justice, can you prove the crime took place during the second set? Uh, yeah, I think. You better know, Paul, otherwise we're through. How many times do we say that in this game? It can't be proven. You make it sound like someone else is going to come up along and do it for you. Stop talking down to me, everybody! Let's get over the cross examination then, shall we? What is your testimony, if you want? This isn't going to be easy. I need some decisive proof, and fast. Heh, you ready, kid? Cause I am. Bring it on, Torpedo Head. The shooting took place during the second set. If you're so sure, let's see your proof. Okay. Oh, I bet it's... It's a soundboard here, right? Objection! Yeah, fucking knew it. Cause that's gonna explain why he misses Q. It seems there was clear proof left behind. Right here in Lamar's song. A song? Exactly is this um device thingy? <laughs> is it another one of those newfangled telephone? No, it's not a telephone! New variety of gramophone, perhaps? Come on, we just use this. Don't get me started on gramophone. <laughs> this device was used to record the performance part by part. Art? You move this slider to adjust the volume. Each instrument is adjust adjustable separately. Lamar's voice included. Aha! Uh -huh. What does this prove? According to Lamar's testimony, and at the moment of the shooting, she forgot the words of the song. Ah, you intend to examine the recording at that moment, ya. Yeah. We might even hear those gunshots. Exactly. Ha! R r ridiculous. How are you supposed to hear gunshots back in that dressing room out on stage? Have you forgotten, Dion? We were all wearing these set these headsets. Oh. We were all deeply involved in our performance. But the Lamar's headset would have picked up what she but she heard all the same. Let's get to the analyzing recording! Right now! Lamar stopped singing when she heard the shots fired. Find that spot and I'll find the gunshot. Okie dokie. Blah, blah. Ah, there it is. Yes. Take that. Take that! Your Honor, listen closely to this part. This is the track with Lamar's vocals. When you stole my balls away, doodly 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 do. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> I did it! I did it! Like faintly there! Yes! Why well, it sounded like a gunshot! What? There has to be some kind of mistake! What? Oh, what in the fuck? What? Whoa! What was going on with your phallic-shaped hair there? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that should be like—I feel like that shit would just be smacking you in the face like all the time. I believe a case has been made. Gunshots were heard during the second set. Which means Lamar's testimony was true. Cry! Ah, ah, ah. Wow, way to seem totally not guilty, man. Or So she was telling the truth about what she heard? Who's the other man speaking now, Mr. Latus? Well, what did he say? It's over. Please press the switch now. Just after that, there was a gunshot, and the 
And then the guitar caught on fire. Detective Crescent, you went on stage during the second set. You could, you could have done it. Mm, why did he, we only hear one gunshot on the recording? Weren't there two bullets fired for this weapon? Lamar was moving through the air vent, your honor. She must not have been close enough for her mic to catch the first shot. But then as she passed over the dressing room, the gun fired again and Mr. Latouche's life was taken. Well, Detective Crescend, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, um, once again, we are, I am reminded of something. Our performance that day. The performance? Seeing the mixing more jog my memory. You were there too, Air Force. Yep, when I point out the, uh, that one segment, the one section he missed. What is it with today? Problem after problem, act two. My heart won't start, my guitar's case is busted, my guitar's been burned to a crisp. To top it all off, someone's dead. And then there was that performance just now. What was that all about? This, this part is off. Which is that? Hmm, it's the second guitar. Ah. It was you, Dion. I thought it strange at the time. How could, I, how could you miss such a simple cue? I know you, I know how you play. You're better than that. Yeah, well, I... What? Cross your what are you getting at? I'm talking about the murder weapon, Mr. Latrus's 45 hand caliber hand cannon. As we've learned, even the shooter doesn't go unscarred with the with the revolver that size. The kickback is enough to dislocate your shoulder if you're an amateur. Oh. <laughs> well, then it makes it even less likely that Maki Tobai could have fucking done it. Wait, you mean his playing his playing was affected because of the, he hurt himself during shooting that revolver? Ha! You're forgetting something. Yes, David Crescent? I am a trained police officer, you know. I've had firearms training, plenty of it. I'm no amateur. The standard sidearm issued to police officers a 38 caliber weapon. A tamer beast. Also, the murder weapon belonged to the victim, Mr. Latouse. Which suggests there was there was a struggle between the killer and victim. So, so the killer might not have been holding the roller correctly when he fired. Is that what you mean? The thought had occurred to me, yes. Uh. Oh, wow, that was dramatic. Holy shit, the thought did occur to him! Oh my god! Well, does the witness have anything to say to this? Did I ever shit? What I want to ask is what Mr. Sleaze rolled up ready for action has to say. Hey you, attorney. Me? Exactly which piece of your evidence is decisive again? You got a little note? noise on a tape that could be anything. You have an alleged guitar cue missed due, miss due to a 45 caliber kickback. I feel like there's enough substantial evidence against this guy that I feel like Maki should be off the hook, you know? I wait for this case, Gavin, I really do. This guy's so fucking obviously evil. You can line up your little weak pieces of evidence all you want. I didn't shoot that manager. And that's the obvious truth. Ah, well, this is the point. Defense's arguments, while persuasive, are not decisive. I believe we should hear what the witness has to say in response to the case so far. Your testimony, please, today, <laughs> Christian. Let's, let's hear what you have to say again. Go ahead and give me some other bullshit. Tell us the reasons why you couldn't have done it. Proof of innocence, okay. Come on, why would I even want to kill that manager? You want a reason? Easy, I got no motive, man. This was the diva's first trip to this country, right? How could I possibly know a manager? If I didn't know him, why would I want to kill him? Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what, yeah, that, I'm not totally sure what he's hoping to get. It's got something to do with the, the, this thing, I think. Mm, simple reason indeed. Prosecutor Gavin, is it the case that, that Mr. Latouche had not been to our country before? According to our records, yes, not even once. I see. Very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross-examination. Great. Now I need to find a motive. All right. Bring it the balls on. I don't want to kill him. You want a reason? Easy. I've got no motive. This is the diva's first trip to this country, right? How could I possibly know her manager? If I didn't know him, why would I want to kill him? Oh, fuck yeah, baby. First try. Your Honor, take a look at this. What the ball sack is that? Mm, looks like candy. Mm, oh, oh, it tastes like fucking earwax. Uh, it's it's not. Don't lick it, please. 
You know you can't tell me what to do, you little bastard. Detective Crescent, ever seen this? Looks like a piece of candy. What? What it is, is evidence. Don't lick it before you can, before you try it. <laughs> Specifically, this is a replica of a cocoon. It was found among the victim's belongings. A cocoon? Never seen one that color. It is a variety only found in the Republic of Virginia. Nowhere else. All right, what is this cocoon, cocoon replica doing in my courtroom? Well, this has nothing to do with a motive for killing, Mr. Latouz. No, nothing? It does. Then why else would I bring it up? I, I mean, if, I, I think it does. You don't sound so confident, man. A cocoon? It's one of those silky cocoons? The kind that you can make, well, silk out of? <laughs> one of the kind you can, can grind up and start with a little straw? Those exist? But no, not, not this one. This cocoon makes a powerful curative. A curative? For, for what? Apparently, it is most efficacious at treating a disease through incur not incur curable. It is the only medicine of its kind. However, it is illegal to take one of these healing cocoons out of Virginia. Whatever for? So the miracle cure won't share with the world? Yes, what I've been wondering. We've looked into the matter at some length. Apparently, it isn't difficult at all to manufacture the remedy for th from the cocoon. Yet if you change the process only slightly, you can easily make a large quantity of something else entirely. A deadly poison, in fact. <laughs> wow, that's tearing on thin ice. <laughs> what? There was an incident several years ago where some of these go got out onto the black market, caused quite the commotion in the global community. Though the media was kept was kept largely unaware. Mm, intriguing. All this has led to a strict ban on the cocoons export, one originally enforced by Interpol among others. Interpol. Right. The victim, Romain Latouse, was an Interpol agent. David Crescent, you insist on referring to him as a manager, but that is misleading. Romain Latouse wasn't killed as a manager. He was killed as an undercover agent. So I was trying to smuggle this gumball into the country. That we are trying to say? I'm saying that could well be a motive for murder. Oh, so I was going to sell it on the black market and make myself a pretty penny. Ridiculous. I mean, I totally, I mean, totally unthinkable. Unthinkable, you say? Why? Perhaps it's time for another. Perhaps it's time for another test. Oh my God! I just can't get enough of these testimonies. How about the smuggling of the coons business? Cocoon smuggling. International fans got a memo about these cocoons. Interpol's all hot and bothered about them. Can't sell them on the black market. Too dangerous. Yeah, cocoon smuggling ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Man, I'm in international affairs. I know the deal. Indeed. Interpol wanted these cocoons bad, want bad enough to send Mr. Latouse undercover. You kids think of the craziest things, but no way I'm going to risk life and limb just to get my hands on some dirty cocoon money. Not the most noble st of statements, but duly noted. <laughs> You're kind of an asshole, but whatever. According to the reports, these cocoons top Interpol's list. Selling them to an underground organization would be risky. Mm, very well, you may get the cross-examination. This is the only motive I've got. He was up, he's up to something and I'm going to find out what. Okay, I think we need to press him on a lot of these. Okay, International Fail's got a memo about these cocoons. That memo, that's how you knew about the cocoons? Oh, nice, nice one, nice one. I'm running scared now. You had to know about the cocoon, the coons to plan this. So how well are these, or no one are these cocoons? I'm here to admit, but I've never heard of them before. Well, Lamar knew about them, though not, not their use. My reports indicate that there are ongoing efforts to control information about the cocoons. <laughs> not even Wikipedia has shit about this. Most people only know that they are legal to export, that's all. Then, I've nothing to be embarrassed about after all. Yay! <laughs> You can say people like me who know about them are a minority, yeah. But that includes everyone in international affairs, man. And everybody, everyone in Interpol too, for that matter, yeah. Interpol's all hot and bothered about them. So there are other Interpol agents like Mr. Latouse. All over the world, likely. Deep on the cover, most of them. That's why these cocoons are too hot for the black market. You don't want Interpol sniffing through your wares. Most came to the conclusion that can't sell them on the black market, too dangerous. Dangerous? Yeah, Interpol finds you, they arrest you on the spot. One on the black market, 
marketeer might think you're part of a sting and take you out himself. Times have changed. It used to be so easy and fun to, to sell illegal merch. Yeah, Kunzbungi ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Hold it. Hold it. But wouldn't a scar scarcity drive up prices? Yeah, and attention. Every gangster and his brother would want a piece of that action. They turn your, turn your forehead into Swiss cheese before you could say objection. M maybe we could get them to cut his hair too. Who's on, who's on trial here again? <laughs> Stop making fun of my hair, all right? I use a lot of hair product. And you're what the fucking talk, Darian. Man, you also obviously know nothing about the market. And that's a bad thing. <laughs> Don't even try to mess with me about this stuff. I mean, it, man, I'm international affairs. I know the deal. Which is why you'd know how to find a loophole in the system. Hey, you can say what you want about me, but back off of, off of international affairs. There ain't no loopholes, okay? What do you think we are, Boy Scouts? That wasn't what I was trying to... What? <laughs> down, Dion, down. Good boy, good boy, have a cookie. Oh, wow, well, hey, it's pretty good. That's why I like you, Clavier. You always know what, what kind of cookies I like. It's as you say, there are no loopholes, at least in the case of these cocoons. International Affairs, Interpol, and Borsinian customers are all watching. See, we know what we're doing. We're not like some yipping little doggies that lap up every word that Diva says. Why I oughta? I'm gonna shoot my fucking laser at you, bro. Do you see me? I've murdered so many people with my lasers already now. Oughta what? You want some of this? Oh, chill both of, chill, both of you. Let's do this cool, ya. Yeah. Grr, screw cool, I want this guy's head on a stick. I'm gonna decapitate him and fucking shish kebab him. And then I'm gonna eat it. Rip that has to be the key to his motive. There's gotta be a way to find out what he was up to. There we are. It's not exactly lucrative, but this guy, the fir Chief Justice, uh, oh, for fuck's sake, why do you underscore randomly like that, Apollo? I don't know, I just, uh, I just feel like you're pissing you off, Nico. Damn it! Uh, anyway, it, because the Chief Justice's son is has the incurable incuritis, so it would definitely be lucrative. Uh, I would. Uh, missed the first part of that. How clueless are you? Everyone in the market's dangerous. Second they found out I was a cop, I could kiss my my keys to goodbye. Why so to a black market buyer? How about someone like this? An oracle, that's about the Chief Justice. A deadly poison can be extracted from the cocoon, but so can a cure. And not a cure for just any disease. A cure for incuritis, which is incurable. Incuritis, I've heard of that somewhere before. Mm. I feel like I've almost seen somebody who was afflicted with that just recently. I couldn't possibly figure out who that, who that is. <laughs> You went to visit a victim of the disease this morning, you fucking idiot! Ah, 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 I just remembered, I, I, I just remembered that I left my juice box over by the seesaw. Damn it! I'll be right back, right back, everyone. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Is he, is he coming back? I really have no idea. So am I, uh, am I off the hook now? All right, all right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's the season, she says the sun ass. You aren't saying? Our witness is a detective. You would have contact with the Chief Justice. You are saying! <laughs> you just would never deal a contraband. Not even to save his own son's life. But if the deal went through, why me? International scandal! That's Detective Christian's insurance. If we ever got out, the one with his neck on the line will be the Chief Justice. Hey, Christian, is this true? First, I'm a murderer, and now I'm a smuggler. How many crimes are you trying to pin on me anyway? It's tasteful as it is to think about. Think about if the Chief Justice were the buyer. Why a seller couldn't hope for a better deal? A very cowardly seller! Don't let Sleaze over there trick you. So I made a deal with the Chief Justice. Where's your proof? Well, oh yeah, and you're forgetting one other important thing. Do tell. Interpol isn't the only ones out there watching this. Virginia Custis barely sleeps. They're so worried about cocoons getting out. Mm, so we were informed. Let's continue with the cross-examination. <laughs> okay. Virginia Customs is very thorough. Everything and everyone gets checked. Cocoon possession will get you arrested on the spot and then sentenced to death. Hey man, if there was a way to get cocoons out of there, I'd sure like to know. Oh. Uh. Oh. The guitar. Ha 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 ha! 
<laughs> I knew it. I call that shit when, right when he when uh Clavier brought up that he had his guitar specially wrapped. I knew I knew that's how Darion did it. Actually, there is one way. Wh what? One way to get something out of the country. No checks. What is it? You become a prosecutor. A prosecutor? <laughs> ah! Ah! I don't believe it. Believe it, Prosecutor Gavin. What was it that you told me yesterday at your office? It was a beautiful instrument. It was played lovingly for many years. A guitar befitting a woman like Lemoir. I knew there was a reason I put that in my evidence bag. So that's another thing. It's like, that's all, I'll throw shit in my evidence bag and like, I have no idea why, but it, but it's going to be useful at some point. Apparently, I, I seem to know that much to myself. How did it appear? I mentioned how much I enjoyed playing it that night and she made a present for me. So this guitar is from Virginia? That it is. We couldn't carry it on the plane. Changes in air pressure and humidity ruined the wood. So we vacuum packed it in Lamar Studio. I used a special shipping service available to me for transporting evidence. They brought it right up right up to my office for me. Pristine and untouched. Did I get that right, Prosecutor Gavin? Untouched? Quite. The guitar was wrapped in seven sheets and vacuum packed in Virginia. The back was untouched until the day of the concert. Are you saying that guitar was? With cocoons this small, it would have been very easy. To use your guitar as a mule to smuggle cocoon out of, out of Virginia. What? what, what? Which reminds me, Prosecutor Gavin, the guitar had some work done on it recently, right? Work? Good memory, Air Forehead. Well, you know how guitars have a round hole in the front. It is called the sound hole. Well, they found something attached to the wood just inside the hole. A broken device of some sort. Broken device? Yes, this, in fact. An igniter? Exactly. Consider this, if you will. What if that igniter wasn't the only thing that was attached inside your guitar? You, you mean... He means this, of course. Uh, uh, oh! There was a way to get a cocoon out... There was a way for to get the cocoon out of the country. They could use... Use Picky Prosecutor Gavin's... <laughs> Picky Prosecutor? Picky Penguin Prosecutor Gavin's privileged guitar as a mule. And who better to do that than someone that dresses like a member of the band? Y York! Wait, wait. York? York Pepper and Patties! Order, order, order! The Igniter? Was placed in there for a clear reason, it seems. It was a safety precaution. To destroy the evidence? That was, so. Precaution? Ah, air forehead. At last, it comes, all comes together. Every strange thing that happened that day. Can review, Maestro, the gentle sounds of Lemar's ballad, if you please. <laughs> First, my keys were stolen, a harmless misdemeanor, which forced me to break the lock on my guitar case. The key was stolen to retrieve the cocoon from, from the guitar. Ah, uh, I, I see. But things didn't go so well. The smuggler wasn't counting on the guitar being wrapped. Only member of the band could get near that that case. Wrapping the guitar would raise too many suspicions. Then the concert began. Right about this time, a very large problem presented itself to the smuggler. What's that? Mr. L Mr. Latouse. Ah! Mr. Latouse, an undercover agent, was onto something. He would have known about the guitar. He'd only have to check their shipping records. So, Mr. Latouse tried to examine the guitar himself. If the cocoon were confiscated, then the jig would be up. The only thing left for the smuggler to do was to get rid of the whole lot. I see. It's over, press switch! Ah! The guitar burst into flames, and the cocoon was lost. And then... Dead! Mr. Latouse died. With Lamoire there to witness, to witness it. There's your case. Booyah! Bitch! <laughs> Brilliant, man! Don't have crescent? I gotta know! You make you make all that, that up on the fly. For a made-up story, it makes a great deal of sense, Daya. <laughs> Republic of Virginia? Sorry, man, but I haven't even been there. True, you haven't. 
Ha! Let's see you make up a story for that, kid. How'd I have the cocoon in the, in the first place, huh? It's not so hard to imagine. You had help. Virginian accomplice. That's all. That you had an accomplice was clear from the start. I s I see. Okay, okay. Uh, the accomplice was Maki to buy. So he did actually have a little bit of something to do with it. Didn't have to do with the death of uh, Mr. Latus, but he did. He was the. That's why the switch was inside the piano. The voice Lamar heard proves it. So I press switch now. Nah! You made this transmission from backstage. Why your co-conspirator was on stage? But. But who was it? This is it, the coup de grace. And for once I know what, I, what I'm doing. I, I mean, Apollo, you seem like you know like you're, what you're doing most of the time, honestly. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like Phoenix sort of bump, bubbled his way and bullshit his way through a lot of cases. I feel like Apollo doesn't do that quite as much, which I like. I don't know, it seems to me like he's getting more control in this case. It's not like Trucy and Bright are coming out to save the day. Although he did give me the firecrackers, but that only helped me initially. There's only one person who could have helped him. Let's hear what Mr. Justice has to say then! But be warned, with a great cute accusation comes great responsibility! Pick up your answer on the fly as a word, you'll be harshly penalized! Are you ready, Mr. Justice? Who was Smuggler's Accomplice? Tell me! Boom! There's only one person who meets all the requirements of the accomplice. And that person is the defendant, Maki Tabai. What? But Mr. Justice, he's your client! A defense attorney includes accusing his client, now that's a new one. I assure you, no one is more unhappy about this than I am. But I, but I am here to defend him in the murder of Mr. Le, him and Miss, Le, murder Mr. Latus. And I stand by my statement earlier that he's innocent of that particular crime. Indeed, defendant is more genuine. He does meet the basic requirements to be the accomplice. But what if it was, in fact, Lemoir? It couldn't have been. Well, you seem sure of yourself. The reason is electronic signals, Your Honor. Electronic signals? Recall this remote only works to a range of 30 feet. Right. Beyond that, it's useless. Mm, yes, that's true. Now think back to the, to the testimony. When the shooter made his transmission, Lemoir was in the air vent. Right above the dressing room where the shooter stood. Let's look at the stage diagram. Yep. It's the area where, that the remote could reach from the air vent. Well, looking at this, seems that Lemoir still could have done the deed. No. When the shooter made that transmission, the stage was slightly different than, than shown here. It was raised up. It was in the middle of the guitar serenade. Part of the stage was raised. Prosecutor Gavin and Lamar stand, stand in were in the air. They were on a tower which happens to be 15 feet tall. In other words, the remote couldn't have worked from Lamar's position in the air vent. Well, Detective Crescent, what do you say to that? Your Honor. Yes, Detective Crescent? <laughs> Is this where you're supposed to, like, flip the balls out? Did we see the video where Gavin's guitar burns? Just one more time. Ah, uh, uh, well, I don't see why not. But what? You told me has a way out of this. Oh, goodness, let's watch this for, like, for, like, the 80th time. But a fleeting pair, doodly 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 doo. Oh yes, I am so hot. Too sexy for my my guitar. Too sexy for my clothes. Too sexy for this bitch. Yeah! I will rip off your cape. Uh oh. Aha! Too bad. So sad, punk. B punk? First you were sleeves, then kid. Now punk. You're losing Rick fast, Apollo. What exactly we're supposed to see in this video? The problem is in what we see, correct, Dion? Right, that's what you hear. We are musicians after all. Care to explain for us non-musicians? Sure thing, punk. Let me get your yawns straight first. You're saying I ordered the wee pianist to set off the igniter. That right. Y yes Well, in order to do that, we'd have to, we'd have to press a switch. Am I right? Okay. Well, take another listen. Pay attention to the piano. Piano? Oh. Oh. It's fine, I, I, I get it. He's saying he never he never stopped playing at any point during the song. Although, honestly, I think a really experienced piano player could manage to press a switch in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a song like that. 
There's some really amazing piano players. Yeah, find a part that didn't have too many chords and then just press it. Well, I don't know. He had to do it immediately, though. So maybe... I mean, <laughs> there are points where you're going to need both hands. Seems to be the problem there. But the, that's why we found the switch inside the piano. That way, he I just had to hit, I guess, a certain... Uh, a certain key probably probably like one of the really high really low keys and it would go down and press the switch for him piano sounds just fine and that's the problem man you still don't get it ah uh, yeah i was just hit that switch if he's playing got got miss diva the guitar the bass the piano and the drums the only one with her hands free was the diva no more but according to you she couldn't have been the, the accomplice could she your accomplice would have had a hard time helping out if they couldn't even press a switch. <laughs> ah! uh, <laughs> derp face. That's fine, I already fucking know. Oh, for fuck's sake, all right, we get it. Rising up to the ba-doodly ba -doo. uh, Are you sick of this song yet? Cause I kind of am. The piano plays non-stop. He couldn't have pressed that switch. Well, Mr. Dostas, the piano does seem to be playing when the guitar catches fire. I mean, I feel like it should be really obvious to him already. I mean, where did we find it? Huh? We found it inside the piano. Well, it's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes. Paula, where are you wrong? I can't be wrong. I'm never wrong. Everything makes perfect sense. How could it all just... Strange. What? What's strange? No, it's just... Something's odd about the performance there. Odd? It's justice! Magida Bai didn't press that switch! Then he could not be the accomplice who claim he is! But everything points to it. Every fact says he's the accomplice. He got the facts wrong, man! Here's, another, here's some facts for you. Gavin's guitar's on fire! But the pianist didn't press that switch. In other words, your story is full of holes. Justice is here. Final opinion on this matter now! Spend it by you to buy the accomplice! Your answer will reflect on everything you've said here! Here's some thought! Apollo, if Monkey's not the accomplice, then our whole case is ruined! I know that. It has to be him. He was the only one who could have helped the smuggler. He had to have pressed the switch. Well, you better find a way to prove it! Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Come on, it's fucking obvious! I feel like this is a really obvious one. Well, there has to be something that doesn't fit. Something odd. Something odd? Wait a demon second! What? You thought of something? What was Gavin saying just now? Strange. What? What's strange? He he probably played something out of. He, he continued playing, but he played something out of uh, time with the music, probably, right? No, it's just something's odd about the performance there. It's not much to go on, but it's all I gotta go. What exactly do you hear? That was odd. Have you come over here or something, Mr. Justice? May I remind you that everything rests on this? He proved back to my press the switch! Let's hear your foul back I proved my darn to my press the switch! Tell me! I don't know if he can call this proof per se, but I can prove it was possible. Then as prosecutor, it falls to me to ask you to show us evidence supporting this. Air for it. You'll show up at this. Ha! Accept it. There's no evidence, man. Secure your evidence, Mr. Dustus. What do you base your claim that the defendant pressed that switch? This! The base for my claim is music, your honor. Music? What about music? Let's listen to the piano part around the time when the switch was to be pressed. Right before the guitar burst into flame. Mm. I hear a piano being played. But doesn't it sound kind of simple? Simple? Uh, I think I know what team he's suggesting. You think Amaki could have played that part with one hand? One hand? You only need one hand to press that switch. He could have played the piano with the other. Ha! Ah, what do you want? What are you, some kind of piano savant? Oh, I, I figured he put it in there and had the, you know, had the little, uh, the little things that smack, smack the, the strings inside the piano, you know, like hit the switch. I mean, we found it inside the piano, but I guess he, could, he just had it with him and maybe stuck it in the piano when he was done. Um, actually, no. The, the what do you know? 
You can't play a pot like that with one hand. Ah! Maybe. I don't know what I'm talking about here. Wait, I know. Oh, wait, I know. Hey, Trucy. Yeah, you got something? Oh, uh, that's about right. Mr. Wright, your father, he's a pianist. Could he? <laughs> oh, Daddy. He could play a part like that if he each hit three hands. So sorry, so sad for you. No, not really. Uh, huh? That was just the easy way to prove it. There's always the hard way. Okay, all right, good. What, man, how are you gonna prove whether he played it with one hand or two? You can't. I admit it will be rather difficult to prove, but it's highly likely he was playing with one hand. H how do you know that? Blues will prosecutor Gavin described as sounding odd. Well, sounded odd. I'll bet we can tell by listening to a certain part of the song. No, N no way. Well, seems to come to the moment of truth at last. Yes, good. I'm ready to see this fucker freak out. So Mr. Just has to save himself. No spot proves the defendant was playing with one hand. Right before the guitar burst of flame. Maki was definitely playing one-handed just before the guitar caught fire. And one section of this song proves it. Okay. I'm betting there's going to be an, a section of the song that's supposed to sound like the last part, right? But it's going to sound more complicated, even though it should be sound exactly the same. It's this section right here, right? Because this one's more... Compared to the when he pressed the switch, it sounds more complicated. I think. Yeah, yeah, all right. Prosecutor Gavin, I'm sure you've realized by now just what it was that sounded odd to you. As I'm sure you've realized it yourself, Air Forehead. Re realized what? I'll demonstrate. Let's listen to the part in the question again, shall we? Pay particular attention to the but of fleeting part melody phrase. But man, 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 how many times do we have to listen to that to, to, to the same thing? <laughs> well, even the characters in the game are getting tired of it. You're right, enough of that. Let's listen to another section, shall we? Another section? The guitar bursts into flame at the end of the second verse. Let's listen to the same spot in the first verse. Pay attention to the O oh, that night in your embrace. Yeah, see. Much more going on there than the other one was. Ah, play verse two again! <laughs> again! See, right there. There. There, did you hear that? They feel the same true, but they were clearly very different. Oh, oh. What? What? Well put, Your Honor. Phrase in verse two is quite simple. The same phrase in verse one has a high and low notes. Why? You'd have to use two hands to play that for sure. Ah! 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 What's that proof? Think you would? I would think you'd know that by now. That's why I hate dealing with amateurs, man. So the two of us had two di had different arrangements. Happens all the time. <laughs> Not this time, Dion. There's no point in changing an arrangement if you can't hear it clearly. And that wasn't the point. I had it played specifically so that the piano would stay in the background. Uh, uh, oh, oh! That w was what I noticed. Why should I? Why should the same phrase sound slightly different, I asked myself. Now ask yourselves why Maki changed how he played. And there's only one answer. He needed a free hand in order to press the switch. Uh, oh! I'm getting a feeling his... When he's freak out, gonna have some. His hair's gonna like blow up or something, or 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 are gonna fall off, or I, I don't know. This ties all the facts together. Well, prosecutor Gavin. Y yes, quite. Though personally, this comes as a terrible disappointment. Heh. <laughs> what? No comeback? Can't believe I. I finally did it. I shut him up. Very well, bargain objection from the prosecution. I will now state the court's opinion on this matter. Heh. Ha ha ha. Ah, 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 ah. Good show, slaves. No, no, great show. It's not over. 
I don't like it when he looks so, so happy. You tell him, Gavin, tell him what's so disappointing. Personally, I'm terribly disappointed in you, Air Force. Uh, huh? Me? Yes, don't get me wrong, your case is solid. The facts all check out, but even now, you have yet to show us a single piece of decisive evidence. Yeah, but the facts, and you can see it was him. Unfortunately, anyone does not include the law. I'm afraid your case doesn't cut it. You suck! <laughs> but, but... That was a fact, so I point toward the same conclusion. Well, without decisive evidence, that's not proof. <laughs> well, he doesn't have decisive evidence either. You're right, does it? In that case, nobody wins. <laughs> Marky Tamai, you go free. But the, on the flip side, we're also going to have to kill you. Welcome to Japan, Fortia, bitches. That's the rule under our current legal system. I don't believe it. Does I seem as though our defense has any more evidence to present? Which means you're going to have to break the system, bro. Oh, I think he did. I think if he did, we would already, we have seen it a long ways back. It is unfortunate, because he's so obviously guilty. <laughs> but for the rest of this course, I'm able to acknowledge your accusation. What? Well, ah! uh, <laughs> Damn it. Thought my derpy face would win. I drew this staring us all right, right in the face. Why can't they see it? Why? What's the point of a legal system that protects criminals? Apollo, remember what daddy said? You gotta cheat! <laughs> You're right. Phoenix Wright taught me the right thing to do is to cheat. Fuck the system. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's flash back to that thing that happened earlier in this episode. Because I couldn't possibly remember that far back. <laughs> it won't be easy proving he did it. It's out of the current court system. So what do I do? Like I said, good luck. And be aware that it will be impossible to prove his guilt by conventional methods. Uh Cause I am Phoenix Wright, ace fortune teller. And I have seen your future, and it says you're fucked. Every man has an igniter inside him. Find Dario Christian's igniter, set it off. Remember, dynamite. Stick the dynamite in his pants. That's right, I have to do it. By Gatto's bracelet, I must do it. What do you mean by every man's igniter? I think he meant I might have to jerk him off. I think he just meant a weak spot, no? The kind of thing that single spark could turn into a wildfire of emotion. So we do this like the old-fashioned way, where we try, where we like, we try to get them all hot and pissy, and and then just give them to inadvertently yell out like, "Oh yes, yeah, I've been so angry at was that time I went and killed somebody." Ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> oh, you fell right into our trap. Oh, if we do, I, I guarantee you, it's gonna be like, "Well, yes, yeah, I guess it makes sense, Dario. So you're not nearly as talented as Clavier over there. You pale and fucking comparison to him." He'll be like, no, blooming ideas, no! And then I'll just go on a rampage. We'll be able to press him uh, with conventional methods. Gotta find a weak spot in this guy. It's like fatal. So can I get back to work now or what? It may look like I got a lot of time on my hands, but I got no more time to play pretend with this deadweight attorney. Oh, well, Mr. Or Justice, we've come this far without the size of evidence. Are you gonna piss him off or something? Or will I have to do it for you? We just won't be coming back to the stand once we let him go! Every man is igniter. <laughs> huh? Didn't you say the better guitar- Better the guitar, the brighter it burns, Prosecutor Gavin. Ah uh, yes, good guitars are kept dry is why. That provides the best sound. Even a small spark could, could cause irreparable damage. Your plan has, has an igniter in it too, Detective. It was there from the very fucking beginning. What? <laughs> but- Fighting time, Justice! If you blow this one, you are so fucking screwed. He'll, he'll be out of your hands for good. Go for it, Apollo! Do it! Do whatever it is you're freaking playing to do! I'm gonna do how Phoenix Wright does it. Pull shit out my ass! Because that is actually where shit comes from, I believe. What? And this igniter is supposed to come burn me up. That's almost poetic there, Mr. Attorney. All the better. I'm rather fond of poetry. And I intend to hear this one through to the very end. Air forehead. You are accusing this man, Darian Kashen, of two crimes. The murder of Mr. Latouse and the smuggling of a Virginian cocoon. This is your last chance to prove your case. This trial is our own oh, for far too stupid long. I am sorry. I am already sick of all you people, especially you, phallic hair man. Mr. Justice, this will be my last warning. The moment this igniter of yours that turns out to be a dud is the moment the trial examination ends, and I will blow up your HP bar into little bits. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. This is the absolute last thing. Just want to make that clear to everybody. Everybody in the courtroom got it. All right, let's, ha let's have it. 
Show us some face for these accusations against Doria Grishad. Okay, this is really my last chance, guys. Unless, in case it wasn't clear enough yet, is it really it? The key that will take apart Doria Grishad's kit plan is, 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 what will Nico do? Will he present evidence or will he call a witness? Find out next time. Just kidding. Probably, I'm gonna try to call a witness because I don't think I have any evidence. Your igniter isn't a piece of evidence. Huh? So what is? It is true that I couldn't show you decisive evidence. Perhaps what I needed to convert my case was something else. You mean a witness? Proving his guilt is a tall order. But I've got just the person to do it. Just the person who... Very well, Mr. Justice. Who is this person who can prove Tarumber Christian's guilt? Well, his accomplice, right? No, it's gotta be Maki Dubai. Yeah. I thought, I, I don't know, I thought I was thinking it was getting, oh, for fuck's sake, auto scrolling! Let me finish my thought, auto scrolling! Blah, 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 it's the defendant, Maki Dubai! You're, you're lying again? Again? Maki Dubai was an accomplice in the cocoon smuggling plot. Without him, Darion Christian could not have gotten the cocoon. Furthermore, he can easily prove that the one who plotted to smuggle that cocoon is the real criminal in this case. Mm, how so? It would require just one of the very cocoons Mr. Latus was looking for. With the cooperation of the Republic of Virginia, we could burn a cocoon. The burn cocoon would leave a particular residue. A residue we would no doubt also find burnt inside the burnt out guitar. Aha, very scientific of you. Emma would be proud. Thus, Maki Dubai acknowledges his agreement with Darion Crescent concerning the attempted at smuggling of a Borginian cocoon. The case is solved! Ha! Ha 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 laughing again! Yeah, I know, Trucy. Your unrelenting passion is remarkable. You really want to get me, don't you? Too bad you'll never be able to. Why not? The little key tickler won't acknowledge anything. Especially not anything to do with cocoon smuggling. Oh, cause he knows, cause he knows if he does, he's going to get fucking murdered. Gonna mock you to die. What's this all about? Taking a cocoon out of the country means death by Bolshevian law. Ah, uh, yeah, see? If our pianist really was a smuggler, then testifying about it would be suicide. Believe me, he's not talking. But you're wrong, Detective Crescend. What, what? It's the other way around. If Maki doesn't admit to smuggling here, he's in deep trouble. Huh? How? Look, if Maki admits to smuggling here, then he'll be able, he'll be tried in our courts by our laws. You don't get the death penalty for smuggling in our country. Ah! Ah! Yeah, that's right. The victim in this case was an undercover Interpol agent. I'm sure that news has already reached Virginia, and they'll likely broadcast our dealings in court today, including the part about the Virginian cocoon. Yeah, yeah, but, but. Uh-oh. But if Maki, to, Maki doesn't admit to smuggling now, he'll eventually be picked up by by the Virginian police. And it's not like he's in a, any danger in our court. We're not going to find him guilty of murder here. Not now. Y yeah, but you, you, you can't. You can't do this. You, you can't. You can't accuse me. Maybe the law doesn't allow it. But who's going to think you're really innocent after hearing this trial? The same goes for my ah! The cocoon smuggling, your entire plan. Mark Dubai knows everything. Ugh. There's only one way out of it for him, and that's to acknowledge his own crime. The crime of cocoon smuggling! Oh, alright, I'm about to, I'm about to freak out everyone. Everyone, ready, ready, ready? Ha! D don't wor don't worry there. I'll, I'll get, I'll get you out of the country. I'll set you up someplace, a hidden mansion. Real nice. You want a house made of cookies? Or no, a house made of pianos? Come on. <laughs> oh. What? What, please? Don't do Don't talk! What in the fucking dicks? <laughs> Don't tease me, bro! Oh, oh yes, it is my guitar solo. Everyone, everyone! Oh! Dion, I don't need a guitar to fucking burn you. Wreck your shit. I consider that my last session with you. We are out. Now see you in hell, bitch. <laughs> Guessing we can treat that outburst as a confession? Ha! <laughs> oh, he's laughing again. 
There's kind of sick desperation in it now, though. Ha! Ah, your gel couldn't keep the hair together. Couldn't keep all your lies together. Well, have you been listening to today's trial? Yes, yes. And you'll talk. You'll tell us court everything. I didn't want it to turn out this way, but I'm not the kind of lawyer that can overlook a crime. Today's trial was all of your, for your benefit, you know. I see no reason why you should hesitate now. I knew from the beginning. I knew. Maki. Situation I cannot explain, but money I needed. Very much money. Today's trial is a delicate issue with our le legal system. The only thing def definite in a court of law is, is evidence. It's golden rule, however. It has become apparent that not all things can be tried by this standard. In another case of this short, short, short service, you may have to consider an alternate system by which to administer justice. It means I'll have to lay down low with my gavel, physically. I, I don't know if that's really the right idea. No, I want to do it. I'm going to fucking do it. And then I'm going to shoot turkeys, bagel sandwiches out of my palms. Like, no. Oh, it's way past my bedtime. Anyway, Mr. Brown, get by. Yes. I promise you will receive a fair trial by the law of our, laws of our country. By which I mean you're fucked, bro. You're never getting out of jail. With regards to the current charge for the murder of Mr. Zeus, the score is prepared to announce the verdict now. Uh. I thank you. Ah. <laughs> uh, John finally took your fucking sunglasses off. I only lie, but you see truth. You find truth. That's our job. Very well. Of course, finds the defendant mine of mine. Not guilty. I look fatty fly. Or the dirt. You can all go fucking die. Get out of here. July 10th, 4.42 p.m. District Court Fan Lobby number two. Girl happened to Maki. Well, he did smoke a cocoon out Virginia. I guess there'll be another trial here. Uh, all's well that ends well. Ha uh, ha ha. Just kidding, you sucked. Daddy! 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 <laughs> oh, you both my thanks. Lemoir? My, something wrong. I'm sorry, I... I failed you. Maki was your partner on stage, your friend. Yes, I thought of him as my own son. Even now I do, yet. Something got a hold of him. Something evil. I see that. And he must pay for what he has done. Is that not how it should be? I'm still sorry. Do not be sorry. You have given me courage. Courage? I'm considering an eye operation. Oh. It was my suggestion, actually. Laser eye surgery can cure blindness now. You mean you'll be able to see again? She'll have bionic eyes. Yes, and it will also be able to shoot lasers out, because I have learned that in this country, lasers are everything. I look forward to having a laser fight with you one day. And I as well. Fare thee well! You guys say I'm the fucking weirdo! Whatever! It's funny. I have always been afraid of the light. Light seems so harsh, so unforgiving. According to the doctor, Lamar lost her sight due to some kind of accident. An accident? Too many drugs. So you know, I suffer from amnesia. I feared that if I could see, perhaps it would open my eyes to the truth I have been running from. I was scared. You know what changed her mind? Hearing your defense in there today. She could feel your gaze unwavering, bulging, massive eyes, capable of destroying towns and cities and slaying millions. Always looking straight at the truth. The light returns to my eyes. I think I will take up painting. Painting? That's right, she's the landscape painter and sound after all. I will paint the two of you, I promise. Woohoo! I can't wait, Lamar! I owe you my thanks to Apollo. Uh, thanks, Mr. Wright, but for what? It's really... Nah, you're right, I don't know what I'm thinking you for. You reminded me I need to hurry things along, quit being a little... little asshole. My secret mission, that is. Right, your secret mission. Apollo, Trissy, I hope that we will meet again someday soon. You bet your biscuits! Me too. Me too. And so, like a ballad, the trial flowed on and on until it came to the end. Thanks to the trial. The guilt, the guitar serenade's serenade was a huge hit. Prosecutor Gavin's even more dazzling to look at now. Oh! <laughs> but there's something I want to say to that guy. Next time you write a ballad... Have them catch the killer at the end! Yeah! The end! But not really, there's one more. Then, 
All right, what we got? Turn about succession. Okay, I think that's the last one. God, it feels like I blazed through this game, doesn't it? Oh boy. Well, that was good. I enjoyed that. I I don't know. I don't really think that case deserved the uh, amount of hate it got. I really uh, I mean, I get, I do understand the whole thing with Maki. It, yeah, it is. You're right. It's 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 totally stupid. Um. But I could sort of see why they did it. Again, I, they had no other options on the table. I mean, but if I will say, I felt like at the end there, even if I didn't have decisive evidence, I felt like I had more. I had considerably more evidence than the one against Maki to buy. You know, I don't know if he really had any decisive evidence either. Otherwise, he's there on the floor, but he also doesn't seem to be injured in any way from the, you know, the recoil from that gun, and you know, we don't really explain any of that, and blah 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 blah, but. I guess always innocent until proven guilty, or guilty until... Gu or actually, no, this game is more guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> it's never gu it's never innocent until proven guilty. It's always the other way around. You gotta prove to me you deserve to live. <laughs> uh, but uh, I thought it was good. Again, I, I thought because it related to the, some of the main cast, that it made it more personal like that. Um, I thought Darian was... I thought he was a pretty good villain, you know? I will say I'm a little shocked that he just went and, like, admitted it there. Why would he just admit it? Wouldn't, shouldn't he... He would. I feel like he should have just let Maki... I mean, there's a chance Maki still wouldn't talk. I don't know, you know? You, you don't know. I would just I would just been like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, if he's going to do it, just let him do it. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. And I liked how they sort of uh, got their way out of it. Although, I guess when you really think about it, it's something we probably should have figured out, like, almost at the very beginning, you know? It's like... I mean... I don't know. I guess it depends. I feel like different countries have different uh, legal systems. I think some would actually send them back to the country they came from, right? To be tried there for uh, for stealing contraband. Um, while other countries, like I think the U.S. for the most part, would will would try them here. You know, at least I think so. I don't know. I I've never taken any law classes, so I, I can't really you know be positive. So I wasn't really sure if they were really, were going to send him back if we really would have tried him here. Um, so, but it, I feel like these guys who are freaking lawyers probably would should have known that like right immediately and been like, oh, well, he could probably just just tell me himself, right? <laughs> but anyway, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not ready to become a picky penguin. We're the SLP where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. Yeah, so the next one should be the last case. And I'm guessing... That should probably be a pretty good one. These, the, the final cases of pretty much every Phoenix Wright game have been pretty good. Um, and I think uh, it'll probably, I'm guessing it'll probably give us some more insight into Trucy and Wright and maybe what happened uh, seven years ago and stuff like that. Uh, which is good. I, I want to I wanna know how it all went down. I want to know. Tell me now. Anyway, as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.